Business as usual is challenged every day. It's not about if disruption occurs, it's when. On this original show from Castellan Solutions, we're learning from the world's best leaders so you can be ready for whatever comes next. I'm your host, Cheyenne Marling. So I'm thrilled to have one of my counterparts, my associates with us today, Tara Davidson, and I've had the pleasure of working with her for about a year now. She is the VP of People for Castellan Solutions. So to jump right in, since COVID hit, there has been so much going on, looking at the workforce, having them to shift from home, and now you have this this great resignation. And it's known as the also the big quit, right? Ongoing trend mm-hmm. of employees voluntarily leaving their jobs from spring 2021 to the present. What do you feel has led to this quote unquote great resignation? Well, certainly the pandemic has affected everybody, right? We've got Mm -hmm. um, uh, some disruption of business and um, unintentionally, right? There's, there's something to be Mm -hmm. um, disruptive in the business world, but then to have this disruption happen to us, um, certainly, you know, puts the whole resilience topic mm-hmm. at the forefront, but you have, you know, asked employees to change how they work and we've not done it just for a few weeks or for a few, for a few months, we've done it for 18 plus months. Mm-hmm. And so now the great experiment of whether or not employees can be productive in a remote environment, or maybe it's a hybrid environment, how we get work done. Are we able to collaborate? All those kind of things are are happening. It also makes people look at what's most important for them, right? Yes, the great resignation mm-hmm. is what the media claims you know, or has labeled it, um, where some people are saying it's not about business coming first. It's more, right now, I think it's more about life come first. And mm-hmm. how does my life um how is my life being impacted by these changes? So employees are thinking a little bit more about that and saying, what can I do? What's important to me? And does my current employer match what I'm looking for? Right? So I think yeah. that's where we've, um, we we're at. There's an awful lot of choice. It's most definitely an employee's market today, mm-hmm. not an employer's market. Um, I think when I was uh, doing some of my own, you know, reading, there's a Gallup poll out there that said in the next six months, 48% of those, you know, that they spoke to were, were thinking about changing jobs. That's huge. Mm. You know, let alone the fact that in second quarter, we had what, 11 and a half million, um, open, um, open jobs out there. So Mm -hmm. employers have to make some adjustments at this point, um, because employees kind of seem to have, the power to say, here's what I want. Here's what's working best for me. And I'm going to find that company that matches what I'm looking for, right? Rather than I've got to just do my job and I've got to bring home, you know, the money to support my family. There's a little bit more choice going on in in today's uh, world. Yeah. And I've seen that too. I mean, I have been working from home since 2009. So I've quite frankly, always, always had the flexibility So tell me, Tara, how are organizations, companies trying to meet employees in making a better work environment, meeting that flexibility, perhaps, you know, because you're looking to not only retain top talent, but attracting talent in this very challenging market. Right. Well, and I think what you said is important. Employees have flexibility today to work in various locations. Um, They have flexibility in the hours that they can work that suits them for their family. Um, They're looking for recognition around the work that they're doing and the value that they're providing. And I think it's important that employers are recognizing that, you know, there are ways that we can go about tapping, you know, um, and a group of people that haven't really been as important, you know, the home workforce, they're calling it these days. Mm -hmm. So it might be the part-time worker. Maybe there's a mom who, you know, was a CPA and, and she started having children and said, I'm going to work from home. 
but now she can work, you know, between the hours of 7.30 and 2.30. Those are things that we need to be looking at. We need to look at alternate sources of talent. We need to make sure that we're providing collaborative technology for folks, that we're aware of Zoom fatigue, right? Mm -hmm. That we're creating people-centric experiences that give employees the space to unlock their potential and deliver transformative results. But if we're also, as a leadership and management team, not recognizing the outcomes over the outputs, we're not satisfying the value piece that employees want to be recognized for, right? Yeah. It's not always the way they get to it. It's, it's about choosing a path trying to figure out what works best for them and delivering the new, the results. So I think that those things, as, as you see employers, the more progressive employers out there try and address this, they're going to look to close that gap on, you know, what are those creative employee experiences that we're trying to, to recognize? How do we not only attract the right talent, but how do we retain the right talent? And you also have to be wary of burnout you feel like sometimes you're always on if there's an email mm-hmm. because you're at home and there's things that we as leaders should be looking at or as companies really i would say one of the things here is is making sure there's there's check-ins managers and employees are checking in how are things going and truly being invested in what they're talking about because it may not be about they're upset about work it may be that something with their child you know or mm-hmm. their parent who's ailing is having, and that's affecting how they come into work. So a lot of companies talk today about, well, they're a family. Okay, then we need to start asking about it. And where's that Mm -hmm. human side of us being the family? How do we support the diversity that we have in the organization and, and really try and provide as much possible um, positive reinforcement for those employees because they might be dealing with stuff on the side that you just have no idea about, right? Yeah. And then they come in and it's going to affect how they do their work. The downside of flexibility is always feeling on. And if your manager is one of those, and I am guilty of this myself, of getting on at 10 o'clock at night because it's the only time I have to get to my email because I'm in meetings all day and I'm shooting yeah. off emails. Gosh, I want to make sure people know I don't expect them to be responding to me. So, you know, Mm -hmm. what are those guardrails as an organization that we're trying to put in place around communication and response time to communication? Um, Managers need to model the behavior. And that's a hard thing to do because sometimes you just want to get ahead and you're working a little bit extra because, oh, I put the kids to bed and there's nothing great on TV Mm -hmm. right now. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to answer a couple of emails and then that turns into a long time. So... The other thing I would say about burnout is empower managers. Mm -hmm. At every weekly check-in that we ask an employee to do, we ask them to take a pulse survey on a scale of one to five. Tell me how your week is going. If somebody's, you know, on a regular basis, they're a three or a four, okay. When they, all of a sudden they're a one or a two, managers should be zoning in to say, hey, Cheyenne, what's going Mm -hmm. on, right? Exactly. Um, Is there something that I, is there a barrier that you're running into a roadblock? You know, can I help you move something? Maybe nothing to do with work. It may be something personal and they're just having a rough week. And how can we help with that? Right. We employees are our most important asset. We need to support them through this crazy time that we're going into or what a lot of people are calling the new normal. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, do we have the right resources for employees to do their job? You know, is there EAP that they could reach out to if they're struggling with something on a personal or even professional basis? Mm -hmm. Are we telling employees how much they're valued, giving them the recognition that they need? And not all employees need the same type of recognition. Knowing how your employee likes to be worked with is hugely important for a manager's role. So what you're Mm -hmm. hearing is managers have an even bigger responsibility today than they seem to have in the past. It's always been there, but it's just it's more public. It's more, Mm -hmm. it's more known for folks that if I have a good relationship with my manager and I'm not getting what I need, I'm going to look elsewhere because there's a lot of choice out there right now. That's all heavy pressure to put on managers. And so we as leaders as well need to make sure we're giving managers the right tools and thinking that maybe as you do a review, a quarterly review, you're telling folks that they're doing a good job. The managers on mentoring or coaching or working with employees or their employees 
that it's not just, well, that's part of the job and you're supposed to be doing that. Like they need mm-hmm. that in, in that pat on the back as well. So what have you been hearing from other organizations and how they're addressing and building kind of an authentic culture with a remote world? I mean, how are they building and engaging with their employees to, again, make them feel valued and have it be a part of the culture? What I'm hearing is it's going back to the fundamentals. We are Mm -hmm. looking at, you know, how do you build a culture in remote, in a remote environment, right? Or in a hybrid environment. There's going to be a mix of people's experiences and culture is based on experiences that you have, relationships that you have with others, the memories that you make, all of those factor in into the culture that you are trying to retain or build or improve, whichever, you know, words you want to use here. I think where colleagues of mine have, have said, like, we're going back to, hey, what's our purpose? You know, what's the core values of our organization? Have we communicated properly our company vision? What is it that we, we want? We got to have that clear foundation because as you're moving employees in to replace the employees who left, that process starts in recruiting just with what you do. You're mm-hmm. trying to explain the place that they would be working for. And if they're savvy enough in today's world, a lot of people are savvy about interviewing and looking about where they want to go and, and who they want to spend time with and do their values match. They're going to be asking questions about that, you know, and you need to be having the leadership team embody that corporate culture and model those core values. If it's just words on a piece of paper or on a wall Mm -hmm. or on a coffee cup, not going to mean anything. And you're going to quickly turn over the people that came in the door recently. The other things you're looking at, um, how do we attract and retain talent? Do folks have the right mindset? Have we been able to articulate what our vision is, what our plan is? I mean, it's good to have the roadmap. And as managers are trying to attract that talent, they should be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to be on the same page. We're trying to re-communicate the message about change happens. And it's not just change because of the pandemic that came across. Mm -hmm. It's business strategies change. And Mm -hmm. you've got some, you know, some evolution that goes on as to how do we come better at doing what we want to for a customer. And for me in human capital or people operations, my customer is the employee. And so I need to have a good understanding as to what it makes them tick. What mm-hmm. happens when they walk through the door or they sit in front of their computer that makes them go, I'm really excited about what I'm doing and I'm going to get to my computer the next day, right? Having people understand that change is part of the process and and evolving, lean into it, be inquisitive about it, ask questions about it. All of these things can help build that culture of innovation, of, of we want to continue to improve, make it better for our customers, whether they're internal, whether they're external. I think all of that can help us move to a more authentic culture. And I would say the last thing that we need to be looking at as far as building the culture is just enforcing that in bond that we have with our employees, how we celebrate milestones, how we, you know, work together collaboratively, how we share memories, we create various moments. I came across a phrase that I really, really liked, and this has to do with coming back into the office. And I think it speaks highly to a culture that's, you know, obviously you're trying to continue to build and it's, it's around purposeful presence. And Mm -hmm. I like that term because a lot of employees are going to say, why do I have to come back in the office? I've proven that I could do my job here today. I don't want to put the genie back in the bottle and going back in the bottle. Right. So why do I want to bring them together? It's for certain moments. It's for collaboration. It's for, cross training. It's for creating these, you know, a sales kickoff, what have you. It's purposeful presence. And I think we need to be thinking about that 
and how that affects the culture or helps us drive the culture that we're, we're trying to build. I look at myself as more of a non-traditional HR person. I want to focus on being agile and agile HR is, is hugely important to me. Technology organizations have been doing it really well for a long time. So why can't we do that in human resources? But I think it becomes even more important in this, today's day and age. Being resilient is about, you know, quickly adapting to disruptions while maintaining continuous business operations. That's what we try and help other companies prepare for. And when it comes to HR, it's a matter of, well, we have that, we have to have that mindset as well, because we still have to attract the right people. We still have to provide the right support. We still have to be able to drive programs that create adaptability and innovation and collaboration and do so in a speedy manner, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole agile approach, especially during, you know, a time of chaos like this has been very helpful, mm -hmm. I think, for folks in the human capital management world, you know, to be able to roll some things out, iterate, get feedback from your clients and your customers as to what works, hugely important because then all of a sudden you come in the next day and everything shifted. Nobody expected mm -hmm. in March of 2020 that, you know, the world was going to change and you weren't going to go back into the office, right? Yep. And then everything just changed and you're mm -hmm. managing to this, this, um, pandemic and being communicative as much as possible with employees, just what's going on and encouraging. And this is something that I try really hard to, to have established here at Castellon is continuous feedback with employees. The more we can communicate what's going on with our employees, the more we can be agile about what they need and what we're trying to do for the business model, course, correct, learn from iteration, multi-directional feedback, I think that puts us in a much more competitive standpoint than other companies. We're trying to get it through because there's going to be a lot of companies that continue to, to struggle with this whole thing. So, Tara, thank you so much for joining. And for those who would like to find you, where can they find you? How can they contact you? At tara.davidson at castellonbc.com. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Business Interrupted. I'm Shia Marling for this leader's episode. To get more insights and resources, head over to castellonbc.com and follow along wherever you get your audio.